instability here permeates unnoticeably across the borders. So nobody is really safe until everybody is safe. Somalia has a population of 15 million, yet only 101 people are allowed to vote. These 101 people are clan elders who represent five major Somali clans that share governance powers within Somali society. In Somalia, people don't elect their own president and their, their representatives in the parliament. Instead, we use a system called a clan system. And it's basically that each clan has elders and clan elders vote for their representatives in the parliament. Then the parliament elects the president. In February 2021, Somalia was set to hold its first democratic election in 50 years. But the clan leaders couldn't agree on how the election would be held threatening to reignite Somalia's past years of turbulence. So what is behind this political impasse and what has been the impact of it? A lot of it comes down to the clan system. They are traditional leaders. There is no specific criteria when they are doing this. They just choose who they think will, you know, represent them well in the parliament. For young people and women, with the reason why it's very difficult for them to get a seat in the parliament is because the elders want to vote for them. As the election further delayed, President Mohamed Abdullahi Farmajo extended his term by two more years. Politicians opposed to this move mobilized militia and soldiers allied to them in protest against the decision, resulting in deadly clashes with government forces in the capital Mogadishu. This retreat by politicians to their clan stronghold worsened divisions and mistrust. A way forward in the election became difficult. People are saying that they want to elect their own representatives and also they want to elect their own president. But it seems that it's a very difficult in Somalia because of a security issue. Somalia's political crisis began to worry its neighbors and international partners such as the African Union, the European Union and the US who urge politicians to come to an agreement or face sanctions. The violent fallout from the election talks threatened the peace and stability of the region. Somalia's stability is critical for the region. Its neighbors have borne the brunt of years of civil and militant conflict. Decades of civil war have led to millions of Somalis moving to refugee camps across the region and making up the global diaspora. In 2021, there are just under 650,000 refugees in neighboring countries. One group that has capitalized off this instability is Al-Shabaab. Although Al-Shabaab was pushed out of Mogadishu in 2011, it holds vast parts of central and southern Somalia. It has also carried out attacks in neighboring Kenya. Al-Shabaab capitalizes on instability. That's where they are at their best. There are Somali-occupied regions in Ethiopia. And so instability here permeates unnoticeably across the borders. So nobody is really safe until everybody is safe. Al-Shabaab collects ransom or taxes from almost every business in the capital city of Mogadishu, which is the headquarters of the African Union force supported by the United States and the European Union and the Brits. If they have not been able to clean up Mogadishu using 25,000 African Union forces, there is no chance on earth that they will be able to regulate the rest of the country from al shabaab and therefore provide security for the wider region. So with all these factors threatening to destabilize Somalia, the economy has also been impacted. Somalia's capital is a growing economic and social hub with some of the country's largest expanding telecom companies based in Mogadishu. Telecommunications is one of the main industries in Somalia. Somalis in the diaspora have also played a crucial role in economic development, contributing 40% of the country's GDP in remittances. What business and entrepreneurs need is stability and predictability. They cannot generate and invest if there is no predictability. Elections are one of the steps that will lead towards the creation of an environment where business people, investors and public sector people can begin to set programs in place that will generate jobs. Although mistrust persists among politicians, the upcoming election is widely expected to overcome the impasse. Plans to hold democratic elections could improve Somalia's prospects for stability, 
This could lead to inclusive peace building, stronger and more representative institutions as a new leader is expected to provide a more stable environment carrying the possibility of democratic elections in the future. If Prime Minister Robley succeeds to hold an election and Somalia gets a president, the people in, in this country are really very hopeful. They will do businesses, small businesses. Uh, parents will you know, send their children to abroad to study. Um, more people will come from uh, you know, the regions to the capital city to enroll in universities. And uh, the next government may improve the security situation in Mogadishu if they uh, you know, make the fight against Al-Shabaab their priority. You know, Al-Shabaab may get weaker and this may improve the security, not just in Somalia, but also in the whole region. So there is optimism if elections happen that things may improve.